All right, what up? My name is AJ Hall. I make drum breaks. This is part two of making an entire drum break pack using only one microphone. Today, we're going to use this hypercardioid ribbon microphone. It's going to be placed in the crush position at the kit. So it's really, really hypercardioid, which means it's going to have to be very strategically placed to get all the sounds I want using only this mic. It's going to be going through our Black Lion Autor Mark II preamp. Not really that expensive of a preamp. It's not really adding that much color. It's just giving me a little bit more full sound, a little bit more boost. All right, stick with me. Let's make some breaks. Yeah. All right, so we're here. I'm at the kit. I've got the biodynamic ribbon microphone right there. It's kind of in a crush position, but it's pointed a little bit more downward towards the kick, and it's going to give me a little bit of the snare wires as well. It's going to give me a lot of kick, but it doesn't have a lot of, high, of low end response. So I'm going to force some of that out with an EQ later on. I'm hoping it's far back enough. It'll give me a nice picture of the toms, the snare, and the kick as well. You're going to hear the hi-hats regardless because they're real high endy. It, they're they're going to come through regardless of what I'm doing. So I don't need to mic these. Hence the one mic kit idea. We're going to push this one mic as far as humanly possible. Here we go. All right, let's mix this bad boy. Here we go. Here is the raw ribbon mic signal once again. Just raw ribbon mic at the kit through our Black Lion Audio Auteur MK2. Let's go. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to dip down some of these EQs. Some of these little EQ notches are really bothering me. So that woom, 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 what I did was I went in with a graphic EQ. I found that spike, drive the spike all the way up at plus 16 dB. Find where that ringy frequency is. Find where it rings out like this. And it was the worst at 159. So you take that 159 all the way down. You're really trying to get a focused sound, especially with one mic, you got to drive them spikes down, Jack. And I did the same thing with the tom, actually. So check this out. Tom is ringing out at exactly 101 hertz. So I took that down about 9 dB because for whatever reason, the ribbon mic caught a lot of side. All right. So here we go with and without the EQ dip. Sorry, without it first. Now with... Now we're just hearing the flop of that kick drum, which is what we're not hearing. The woom, 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 woom. So much better. All right. Next thing I did was I added an SSL E channel by Waves. I'm adding some highs, 3 dB at 9.75 hertz. So that's 9.75K. And so 9,000 hertz. I'm adding 3.8 dB at 1.69 kilohertz. So a little bit of a high mid increase as well. And a low mid increase at 7.5 dB at our good old 280, that meaty portion of the break, right? So we also have got not plus 9 dB at 77 hertz, because I told you I had to pull some low end out of this break. It's only one mic. I got to pull out as much low end for the kick sound as I can. Here's the break with the SSL E channel and then without it. Without it. So a pretty drastic difference right there. It's already sounding a little bit beefier. All right, so now we're going to go to the main channel, the actual stereo out channel. This isn't usually how I mix a one mic break, but this is just my template for when I'm mixing 10 mics into one break. So I've got all my plugins right here. I'm going to show you them one by one. I'm not going to use all of these. This is just what I keep to keep my breaks diverse, all right? So the first thing I added was some VEQ4. It's the Waves Virtual Equalizer. It's based on an old Poltec EQ, I think. 
and I've got a dip out at 82 um, and I've got a little bit of an increase at 330 hertz, like a little bit more of those low mids. I've got a way dip out minus five at 560 hertz. So that, that right smack in the middle mud, I got a little bit more of that out. A little bit of the high mid dip at 1.5. Just a little bit of highs coming out, 6.8K, just one dB plus, just a little bit more, all right? So here's with and without that. Without it. Just a little bit more focused, all right? So the next thing I did, which gave me a whole lot of gain, is my CLA-76. It's based on an 1176. I've got it on the all buttons mode, which is based on the fact that on these original actual hardware units, you could press all the buttons down and hold them down at once. You can't actually do that on a plug-in, so they gave you the all button mode right there. It says all. Here we go. Without it first. With it. So a lot more gain right there. Now it's starting to sound like a break, dog. All right, here we go. So the next thing I added was my Sansui Spring Reverb Unit. It's actually down here. A Sansui RA700. This is, this is not, for all intents and purposes, a piece of musical studio gear. It is meant for home stereos in the 70s, dog. But what is more hip hop and taking a vintage piece of home stereo equipment and freaking it, all right? What's more hip hop than that? So we got our spring reverb down here. My IO plugin in Logic is being used just like a patch bay. So it's basically a patch bay for your interface if you have enough ins and outs. IO, in, out, all right? So here is the break through the RA700 with all our plugins we've added. God, I love what that does to the snare, man. You can't beat real spring reverb, man. All right, next we added our RC20. RC20 is a favorite of a lot of hip hop producers. I know using RC20 on real drums is whatever, whatever. But if you want clean drums, dog, go watch a CLA tutorial or like go watch an Eagles documentary. This is this is hip hop, fam. All right, so what we're doing is we're adding a little bit of distortion in the iron area, which is basically emulating, I believe, and don't quote me on this, but I believe it's emulating a SSL uh, bus compressor. So it's getting a little bit of that overdrive out of there, just adding, adding some more meat. I've added a little bit of wobble, a little bit of a uh, vinyl noise for the children. And I actually really enjoy the reverb in RC20, even though it's kind of digital sounding, I actually like it very, very sparsely. So I'm gonna add all these elements one by one with the RC20 on. Ready? Here we go. First I'll add the reverb. Yeah, I like that. Just a little bit of the distortion with the iron, the SSL compression emulator. Little bit of wobble. You're just going to hear that really in the spring reverb. A little bit of the vinyl noise. Just a little bit. Just a tiny bit. All right. So next, what I'm going to do, I told you I had to freak those hi-hats a little bit. I have to force out some highs on the hi-hats. Right now, all we're getting is just the kick and the snare right there. You're not hearing much of the hats. So there's a way to cheat this, but it gets ugly. <laughs> all right. So I've got my Abbey Road Chambers reverb plugged up. And it's basically the wet signal is on 12%, but the reverb is all the way up. So the reverb has absolutely no lows in it. It's all highs. You see, I've got the top cut all the way up, like at past 10K, and I've got a 10 dB boost at 10K too. And I've got the low cut all the way out at like 6.4. So there's nothing ringing out in this reverb plugin below 10K, which is way, way, way up there. That's why we're forcing out the hi-hats. And what I really did to get the hi-hat sound to jump out a little bit more is I added... I added a couple of milliseconds onto the delay parameters down here. It actually comes out 25 milliseconds on the right and 24 on the left. So it's just a spare amount of difference, just a hint of a stereo image. We're like forcing out a stereo image basically with the hi-hats. So here it is with it. Pay attention to the hi-hats without it. On. 
just a little bit of shimmer out of those hi-hats, right? Like I said, it's a one mic drum pack. We had to force it out. So here we go. One of my favorite plugins ever by the homie Decap. There's, there's a transient shaper in here. There's a little bit of saturation going on, a little bit of EQ, which is the air knob, a little bit of high-end EQ, a little bit of clipping, and it's running at 50%. So I'm going to play you the, the full break with the wet signal all the way up, and I'm going to back it off to 50%. Here we go. Check it out. All right, a little too much, so I'm going to back it off to 50%. Woo <laughs> yeah, now we're starting to sound like a break, dog. All right, so one of the things I always love to add on my break channel is this Abbey Road Mastering Channel. It's uh, just a console emulator, and I've got one of the Lou Diaz presets in here that I kind of freaked on my own with my own little parameters. I believe it's the Warm, wa uh, warm and Wide Modern Master preset by Lou Diaz. I freaked it a little bit to my own liking, and here it is without it. on off on a little bit punchier a little bit more high mid air going on in there just vintage vibe man <laughs> all right so ladies and gentlemen it is time for the crown jewel of my production setup this is beatrice she is a tiak 1230 tape machine quarter inch tape dog i'm a big big advocate of quarter inch tape not two inch tape why because a lot of these old breaks that that us hip-hop heads like to use they're actually made on really cruddy old like quarter inch tape machines and not big fancy studio two inch tape machines Two inch tape, you really got to push hard to get any sort of vibe out of it. Quarter inch tape, it's set it and forget it. Just, tur just turn up the input signal, you've got instant vibe, man. All right. So this is a TAC 1230, and I'm going to run the break through it. So here we go. Check this out. Without it. All right. Hold on to your hats, people. Through the tape. Here we go. Once again, without it. With it. That's absolutely gorgeous. All right, now my last plugin that I always like to add is this Dirty Filter by Bedroom Producers Blog. This is an absolutely free plugin. So it's got a low pass filter, a high pass filter, and a drive for both of those filters and a slope for both of those filters. Mix knob and a volume knob, which I, I'm not leaving. I'm leaving unaffected. All right. So check it out. I'm going to take this drive down to zero and put it back up to 23. Check out what this thing does, man. Right. So right now it's not doing anything. Check out what it does to the high end after you after the tape. Without the dirty filter. With the dirty filter. Boy, all right, that sounds absolutely gorgeous. I'm gonna export this and I'm gonna get the kick MIDI. Now it's time to add the kick MIDI. All right, here we go. So I've got our final break right here. Peep it out. Final break, once again. Nasty, absolutely nasty. All right, so now I'm gonna copy that original file right there. I'm gonna copy that original file and I'm gonna paste it down here to another channel which has a all the highs dipped out and it has a noise gate after that and has a transient shaper after that so what that essentially does is it only lets out the kick drum hypothetically all right. sounds good to me all right so now we're going to bounce that track in place we're going to bounce that track in place and all right yeah Bounce it in place, which is going to create a new track. And now we have, look at that, 
just the kick drum in its own track. Not the kick drum, but just the isolated kick signal. Go ahead and zoom in and make sure that lines up with the original break. Turn on flex time. Get the beginning of the transient and put it right on beat one because the break starts right on beat one. Cut that, zoom back out, and now we're going to take this track, which was printed with just the kick drum, right? We're not actually going to use that audio. We're just going to use it as something to double the drum track with. So you go to replace or double drum track right here in Logic. Replace or double drum track, track menu. Then you put it under C1. So this is going to spit out some MIDI at just C1, all right? Here we go. Look at that. We got perfect MIDI for our kick drum. We're going to drag it down here to where I've already got a drum machine loaded up with one of my own kick drums. All right. One of my own kick drum samples from Left Field One Shots Volume 1. Keep this out, bro. Here's the break without the kick MIDI sample. Now, here it is with the kick MIDI sample mapped to one of my own kick drum samples. It sounds a lot thicker because it is a lot thicker because it's got this going on. Oh my goodness, man. Once again, without it. Now you want a little bit of that bottom end. Oh my goodness. All right. So ladies and gentlemen, that is going to wrap it up for me. Uh, we are going to return for part three of making an entire drum break sample pack with only one mic, all right? Stay tuned for the next episode. Let's go.